guys. So I want to talk about uh, something that I think is still pretty unexplored, which is the connection between reverse Ashi and outside Ashi. Uh, some people have dabbled with this a little bit, um, and a lot of people, of course, in competition have explored it, but I haven't seen much in the way of people like really breaking down these connections, okay? So for instance, last night, I was comparing a match of Husamal Polyaris, he was against uh, Alan Belcher, obviously. You guys remember that fight, in the end, Polyaris lost, but there was still some good leg locking work on his part, good defense on Belcher's part as well. But anyway, there was one specific sequence which I thought was very, very interesting, where he connected reverse Ashi and outside Ashi, and it reminded me of an old match that I had, actually, all the way back in 2014. Um, so I'm going to break down these techniques, talk a little bit about them, and then uh, after the demonstration, I'll, I'll analyze the specific matches, okay? So we're going to start in, uh, in a double-seated situation like so, at inside position. Okay, we're just going to do a very basic entry to outside Ashi. What we're going to do here uh, is going to take my left leg, bring it over the hip here. So I have like basically kind of like a seated X guard, if you will. And I pull my legs, I pull myself in, and now I'm in an outside Ashi on the bottom. Okay, from here, what I'm going to do is get my right foot on his hip, pushing slightly at his ribs, my left leg over the top. Okay, now from here, what I do is my left leg is going to extend. My left arm is going to go around the uh, knee of the primary leg, and now my right arm goes from this angle here. Right before I was trying to hold the knee in place so he can't start turning and coming up like this, right? You're not going to indefinitely hold the guy's leg here, guys. If I'm holding him like this all day, that's never going to work. But I'm just trying to hold for a moment before I get stronger grips to advance positionally, right? Now I'm going to extend here. I'm going to post his hand on the inside, and come up like so. So here I have um, hip height, but he, he's still in a seated position. Okay, if you take a look at, I'll keep it right here. If you take a look where his body was, he's still seated, right? So I have hip height, right, but he's still seated, okay? My goal uh, normally would be to come back all the way into, now free, go flat on your back. To get him into a supine position, right? Now he's flat on his back, right? And now he's most likely gonna lock his legs in a triangle, right? Now we have, Pretty con a pretty conventional reverse Ashi here, right? And these are things you can do. You can separate the legs, uh, separate the legs. You can look for toe holds, heel hooks, knee bars, whatever you want, right? But what happens sometimes is that I go for this, I get to this point, but now I can't sit him back. As I go to go into him, he goes into me as well, and I can't sit him back. And sometimes what will often happen, in fact, is he comes towards me and I scroll onto this left hip here. Okay, now he's going to lock his legs, and we have this type of uh, reverse Ashi. So before we had a top reverse Ashi, this is basically a bottom reverse Ashi. It's the same position, right? My hips are facing into uh, the, the side, but also a bit of the front of his knee, right? And he's got his legs locked in a triangle here, okay? So what, what are we going to do here? And, and why would we even want to be here in the first place? Okay, so let's go back. So, first of all, let's talk about why do we even want why would we even want to get to this position in the first place, okay? So when I'm looking at gain heel exposure in a double seated situation, one of the main things I'm focused on is the relationship between my hips and his primary leg. This isn't the only thing I'm focused on, but it's 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 a it's a big thing, okay? If my hips are facing into the back of his knee, right? See how my hips face into the back of his knee. Man, it's, it's not impossible, but it's very fucking hard to expose somebody's heel, especially in an outside Ashi. It's, it's really, really tough. Okay? If I can get my hips facing into the front of his knee now, so free go supine. So free to, free to supine here. Okay? And let's, let's say for whatever reason he doesn't lock his legs, or maybe I open up his legs. It's really not hard to expose his heel here. It's, it's pretty easy, in fact, because of the relationship between my hips and his knee. Okay? my hips are facing into his knee, all right? <clears throat> so it's pretty easy for me to expose the heel. So anytime I can get my hips facing into the front of his knee, you can expose his heel. Well, what is probably the easiest way to get your hips facing into the front of the knee? Transitioning into a reverse Ashi, right? If I have a reverse Ashi, which is like kind of like a, this is a, a knee bar position, right? That's what most people would, would think of this. He locks his legs, right? So of course you can get knee bars here, but you can also open things up and very easily catch heel exposure, right? So now, um, that's, that's one way to, to do it, you know, where you get 
that's like an ideal situation, but in actual competition, it can be really hard to get to that like full top reverse ashi because you gotta put the guy back flat on the mat. And the reality of it is, when I'm here, I don't really have a great mechanism for putting his hips down, right? Like my best bet is like, walking towards him. And of course that can work. Um, but you know, it's not always going to, especially if he's uh, aware of it. If, if he knows that it's coming, it can be tough to get. So as they go to go towards him, right? He comes towards me, and we pull, and we land here. And now he's probably gonna lock his legs. So what should we do here? How can we separate the legs here, okay? So what you wanna do is grab onto this foot, okay? Now take your bottom leg, in this case is my left leg, and I'm gonna post that out of the back, and I come out here like so, okay? Now I'm gonna reach, and grab his leg, and I open things up. Okay, come back for me. Okay, now, where I grip is very key, okay? And we're gonna talk about this in the next section when I break down the, the matches, Polyaris match and, and uh, my match. Where you grab the foot is very, very key to what possible submission options you have, right? I'm talking about this foot, okay? When I go here, okay, now, if I grab from the outside, okay, and I open things up, most likely what's going to happen is you're going to come back and you're going to have a knee bar available as an option to you. Okay? Come back, lock up the legs. It's going to be really, really hard if you grab from the outside to pull this and then get to the heel hook. Right? I'm here and as I'm going for the heel hook, he extends his legs and you're probably going to wind up with a knee bar or maybe he goes, maybe he goes and he spins into cross Aji. Not a bad outcome. Right? You've got a pretty good position, but you didn't gain immediate heel exposure. Okay, so let's come back. What Pagliarius did, which was very, very clever, is when he came out here, right, he took this hand and he went here. And he opened up like this. Now, the heel is much easier to get because the arm is on the inside. Right? So my hand, my hips are facing, not directly into the front, for sure, but they're facing, it's starting to go towards the front of his knee, right? If you look at where his knee's pointing, right? It's not exactly the front, but it's not super far from it. And I'm able to separate. Um, also, it's a good idea to have this hand come to the ankle, so you can pull it towards your chest. And now, it's very easy to gain heel exposure. Okay, let's come back. So, one more time. Uh, let's just go from the beginning, actually. Him. He locks up his legs, we hold like so. Now I take this left leg and I extend off the mat. What I'm doing here is I'm making it hard for him to hold on to this. If he stays here, squeeze as tight as you can, I can't open this. It's really, really hard. I can't really even get my arm inside. Even if I could, it's so tough to open. But the second I go like this, it's so much easier to open that up. Okay? And now, because my arm's on the inside, I can pass off to an outside heel look very, very really easily. What happened next in that fight, you guys are going to see this in a second when we break it down, was that Alan Belcher backstepped. Go for it, backstep. Yep, yep, yep. And Poyers tried to follow him to get a belly down finish, but ultimately it slipped and he lost it. Okay? But um, the initial heel exposure is what I thought was interesting in that match. So, um, yeah, I'm going to break that down next. Okay, guys, so now we're going to break down uh, those matches I was talking about. We're also, before we get to them, actually, I, I wanted to show uh, another match, which is uh, connects to the topic we're looking at. All right, so this is Mauricio Shogun Hula versus Kevin Randleman. Shogun has a far hip ashi here where you can't really see it, but his left foot is over Randleman's right hip. Uh, and obviously his right leg is over the, the left leg, the left thigh specifically, uh, and his legs are locked in a figure of four. This enables him to put pressure to the back of the knee, especially when he grasps his toes like so and pushes them. Okay, This is good for gaining heel exposure or alternatively, hold. But earlier in the match, Shogun had been trying the heel hook uh, again and again, and he wasn't having a lot of success with it. So here he's switching to the toe hold. Now with the toe hold, he gets the roll that he wanted the whole time. He was trying to get that roll with the heel hook, but it wasn't coming for whatever reason. 
You know, Randleman is trying to use his secondary leg to defend, kicking to separate Shogun's hands, right? So looking right here. This is very similar to the knee bar defense we're going to look at later. Um, obviously, guys, when you are able to climb your hips on top of your opponent's hips, you're uh, and your, your hips are facing into the front of his knee, you now find yourself into the reverse Ashi position, okay? And when we're looking to gain heel exposure in double-seated leg entanglement situations, this angle of our hips facing into the front of our opponent's knee gives us a big advantage in that battle, in that, that battle of heel exposure. So therefore, defense in a reverse Ashi is... Uh, very similar to defense, like late stage heel exposure situations. So basically, late stage knee bar defense, late stage reverse ashi defense, and late stage uh, like heel hook uh, double seated heel exposure defense, all very similar topics. Okay, so here Hogan is clearly going for the knee bar, and what happens is he's unable initially. So he's got good hip height, he falls, but Randleman curls his leg, and he comes up towards him. Okay? He's unable initially to get uh, the extension in the leg that he wants, and he starts to fall to his side like I showed uh, when I was demonstrating the technique. The only difference here is that Randleman obviously doesn't have his legs crossed. So Hogan is going to do what I said can be pretty hard to do. He comes, look what he does with his legs. He climbs his hips all the way up. He's seated on top of Randleman's hips, and then what Randleman does is brings his own back flat to the mat, which really isn't what he should have done. Actually, it's not even clear if he does that. So he's here, he's sitting on his hips. Yeah, it's hard to tell from the angle, actually, to be honest. Uh, but regardless, he's able to sit pretty... Even if his back isn't touching the mat, he's leaning farther back than he should have been. He should have been driving forward, okay? Because of that, Hogan is able to much more easily fall into the knee bar, and he gets a very, very brutal lat knee bar finish. And Randleman is going to be forced to tap, or his leg's going to break. Okay, so you see that right there. Now, let's turn to a match of mine. It's actually a very old match of mine. This is from 2014. All right, so I have a Z guard. I'm going to elevate my hips up, and I invert into a knee bar, or into a reverse ashi, where I'm going to try to get the knee bar. Here, the ref is fucking saying that this was a heel hook. <laughs> heel hooks were illegal in this tournament, but knee bars were illegal. The guy had no idea what he was talking about. It's not even close to being a heel hook. Anyway, so, my opponent wisely crosses his legs here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is, I turn, and I open up the legs, and now I'm going to go for the knee bar. We'll look at the finish in a second. Look at a little bit right here. Yeah, we'll go all the way to the finish in a second. Let's talk about that grip break first. Okay, first of all, if I could have, what I would have wanted to do is climb my hips on top. But as soon as I entered, so here I've got the reverse ashi, right? This is like a bottom reverse ashi, right? I go spin for the knee bar. And he's pressuring. See how he's pressuring towards me? It would be really hard to climb my hips on top of his there because he's driving towards me. You can contrast that with what happened here with Shogun and Kevin. At first, Kevin did the right thing. If you look uh, about, where was it? Right about here. Right, the first defense was good. Right? Oh, wait, no, that's the one he gets wrong. <laughs> yeah, this is the one he gets wrong. Look, Shogun goes back. Kevin should have kept coming forward. We're going to see Alan Belcher do that much better later on. And it, it, coming forward in and of itself is not enough, but that's, that's a start. That's one of the first things that you ought to do. You never want your back going flat to the mat in such a situation. And you never want to, like, just, even if your back doesn't touch the mat, you never want to just lean straight back, okay? That's going to enable the guy to get really good hip height and uh, finish, separate your legs and finish out the knee, either the knee bar or gain heel exposure for the heel hook, the outside heel hook. Or it could be the inside heel hook, too, hypothetically. But anyway, here my opponent does pressure in, so see how he's coming towards me? It's really, it would have been really hard for me to like get my hips on top of his. So when he crosses his legs, what I have to do, is instead of trying to get my hips on top, I invert. Now I'm able to separate the legs, but look at where my hand goes. It goes to the outside. 
anyway. That's going to basically limit my options. Uh, that you really need to go for the knee bar here if you do this. It's really hard to transition to the heel hook because my arm's on the outside. So look what happens. As I fall, or as we both fall together, rather, I should say, my arm is not in a position to gain heel exposure. It's, not, it's hard to get that from outside to inside fast enough to catch the heel. Okay? But ultimately, obviously, here I'm controlling the secondary leg still. I switch to the primary leg. And this time, I'm able to get through to my finish. I tried a regular knee bar. He proved very resistant. I was going up two weight classes here. This guy was very big and strong. So I switch to a lat knee bar. And I'm able to get the finish. Yeah, that was looking pretty tight at the end there. All right, so now let's look at Alan Belcher and Husamar Poliaris, okay? We're going to see here more clearly the uh, connection between reverse Ashi and outside Ashi, okay? So, and outside heel hooks, obviously. All right, so here, Poliaris has a reverse Ashi that he gained from, uh, well, Belcher had into that twister and he went into his leg. Now here, Poliaris is going to go, and look what happened. So he's going to invert. So he inverts off his leg. Okay. And now, because his arm is on the outside, see Poliaris' arm on the outside, the same place my arm was before, when he separates the legs, it's really hard to get the heel hook. So instead, he goes for the knee bar. Well, he loses it because good knee bar defense on Belcher's part. He, Belcher misaligns the angle of Poliaris' hips. Okay. So what he does is, look, right now, for the knee bar, obviously, from the offensive man's perspective, you want to have the knee facing into your hips. From Belcher's perspective, the defensive man, he wants either the side or the back of his knee facing into Pagliari's hips, okay? At this stage of the game, okay? So what he does is turn, see how the knee is now facing into the ceiling. Now, Pagliari has a cross Ashi, okay? Again, I talked about this in the demonstration. Not a bad position. This is not a bad outcome for Pagliari, but it's not the finish he wanted, right? Pagliari persists with the knee bar, but it's not really there. He goes back into an outside Ashi. Now here we're going to see from the outside Ashi, he goes to get hip height. So he's trying to climb on top, just like Shogun did to Kevin. But Belcher comes forward. It's going to happen very frequently, guys, uh, when you go to do this. Okay. Now Belcher employs a defense where he crosses his leg. Okay. This is a little bit of a controversial defense. A lot of people don't actually like this defense anymore. I think there's some value to it. Uh, Nathan Orchard successfully used it briefly against Eddie Cummings before Eddie ultimately obviously got the outside heel hook. Um, I've seen it, it work a few other times. Obviously, it didn't work the entire match against Eddie, but it did work once uh, pretty uh, noticeably. He was able to heel slip because of it. Uh, but anyway, here, Belcher has success with it. So he pushes at the bicep of Pagliaris' arm and he goes for the heel hook. Okay bicep and elbow area, and now he's going to lock his legs, just like with the knee bar defense that we saw earlier, right? Because it's the same basic configuration of the offensive man's body in relation to the defensive man's primary leg. His hips are facing into the front of his uh, of his knee, right? See where his hips are facing? So you lock your legs to stop both of those things, right? The two main ways we can inhibit joint locks are with movement that misaligns the pressure that the offensive man is applying to the defensive man's joint. A great example of that is right here. Right? So there's a pressure being applied to the joint, and he misaligns the pressure by pointing the knee to the ceiling, and now the pressure is still there, but it's not it's not putting breaking forces onto the joint. Okay. The second way you can defend against joint locks is by using the secondary limb, either your arm or your leg. In some cases, you could use your arm and a leg, right? Uh, you use another limb, we should say, to cover the limb being attacked, right? Right here, Belcher's using this leg to cover this leg. So he can't, he can't heel hook him, okay? Or knee bar him, for that matter, right? Now, what Paris says here is very, very clever. This is a modification to what he did before, okay? Ultimately, he loses it, and we're going to look at how he loses it. I want to break this down, uh, the modification he made. All right, so look at what his hand does here. Outside. His left hand is outside. So now when they spin, the only option he has is the knee bar. Because it's not a bad option, you know what I mean? Like, I was able to get it against that guy in that match, and he had a lot of size on me. Uh, so it definitely can still work very well. But if you want to go for the heel hook, 
the best way to do it is by bringing your hand, not to, uh, the hand that's going to separate his legs, not to the outside, but rather, look, it goes right here, to the, to the inside, very subtle, but now it's in a position where it can immediately grasp the heel. And he's able to do that because look at the angle of Playaris' hips. It's facing, again, it's not directly into the front, but it's pretty close to it, right? It's facing at a good angle into Belcher's uh, leg, his knee specifically, such that he's able to very easily gain heel exposure, okay? Now here, what goes wrong is Belcher does a great job here. This is a very similar position to when Playaris finished Mike Masenzio, okay? Mike Masenzio um, got finished by Pyaris in an outside Ashi where his uh, Pyaris' hips were facing down into the mat, uh, very similar to this, okay? What Belcher did that was different than what Mike Masenzio did was first he hand fights, see so he was hand fighting here, the next thing he does, and he also, he's also, if you notice, he's extending his leg, so hand fighting, extending the leg, and he gets this in, uh, his secondary leg involved to push, and now look, he goes back into the defense where he crosses his legs. But the big difference between what Kevin Randleman did earlier uh, like at the, at the beginning, okay, which was successful to what Belcher is doing now, okay, is that not only is he coming towards his opponent, he comes towards the opponent, covers the, the, the primary uh, limb uh, for, for, for a brief period of time, but then he's going to suck his knee back to free it from Playaris' knee line, okay? Now, his foot, actually, it, it, it's two main things. It's the knee coming out of the knee line, but you sometimes don't even need to get that necessarily. There's that, but the, I would say even the more important detail is the foot in front of the bicep here. You see Belcher's right foot in front of the bicep? Okay, that's a similar position that you would have if you toe slipped, okay? If you toe slip out of a heel hook, you would wind in this sort of a situation where now the foot can pass in front of the stomach, and you can go to a 50-50, okay? And now, here he is, all right? Let's look at that again. The whole thing from the from the top. First, double seated outside Ashi. Polyaris wants to gain heel exposure, so he's going to want to gain hip height so he can turn his hips to face the front of, of Belcher's knee. Okay. Hard, there's two main ways to gain hip height in this situation. You can climb on top directly this way. That's tough if the guy is driving into you. So what he does is he goes side to side. He rolls to the side. Okay. Now his, his hips are passing from the back of the knee to the side, and ideally they would be facing eventually into the front of the knee. That's usually pretty hard to do, but even just pursuing that can sometimes enable you to gain heel exposure. Uh, I don't think it works at a really high level, but it is a strategy you can employ. Now, Belcher crosses his legs, and now look. He always inverts, and his hand goes to the inside to separate the legs. And because of that, he's able to gain heel exposure. Once heel exposure is obtained, he's just going to defend by first grasping the hand, okay, extending his leg, then he's going to take his secondary leg and push, okay, and immediately lock his legs. Once his legs are locked, he doesn't hesitate. He's coming forward, he's get, this is a good move too, getting a, a tight waist in the body. He's going to suck his knee back. His knee potentially could come out of the knee line. Right, and that's certainly going to help us. But the even more important detail is that his foot is now in front of the bicep. If the foot is behind the bicep and then the tricep, you can get heel hooked, or you can get ankle locked. Right, which is an ankle lock sometimes is used obviously as a submission, but it can also be used as a way simply to inhibit your ability to transition into other variations of ashigurami. Here, Belcher wanted to be in a situation where he had more of an ability to to counterattack. Right, so he takes his foot in front of the, the guy's bicep. And he passes it to the other side. Here, Polyaris is actually even like helping him. He's not even really fighting it. Polyaris probably figured, well, I tried an outside Ash a few times. You know, Belcher's clearly fighting to get to a 50-50. Maybe I'll just put him there and, and I'll take my chance with it as well. Okay. And then as you know, you guys probably know, if you've seen this fight, Belcher ultimately gets out and winds up PKOing Polyaris. It's outside the scope of this video, so I'm not gonna go into it. But uh yeah. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed.